Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Baker here. Welcome to today's entertainment. We're looking at a character that's not trending at all. I'm not entirely sure why we chose this one. This is only the third video, which means we can't just review any Funko Pop we want. Oh, and uh, this is Craig. He has no respect for the YouTube algorithm and decided this specific pop would be a great choice. Craig is... Uh, I'm not sure anymore. We can't hear him, he doesn't make any sound, and he's just there. I don't mind though, I'll handle my microphone and he can freak out the collectors with the way he has already thrown out the box. Ages ago, long before this video was even imagined. I decided to give him an accessory today though. Uh, he has his own camera, so you can get up close and personal with the pops. <laughs> Should be fun. Enough rambling. Uh, Anyone know what this pop actually is? Anyone? I didn't think so. This is Parzival from the film Ready Player One. He's definitely not Parzival from the book Ready Player One. Once again, this is a warning. This review may contain spoilers from both the book and the movie. Not that you can actually spoil this genre, it's an adventure, everybody knows how it's going to end up. But just to be safe, I'll reveal the spoiler right now. Parzival survives the snap. Welcome back, uh, let's have a look at the figurine. Parzival is number 496 in the movie set. There are eight other pops from this movie, they all look really good. They even have the Iron Giant in it. I'm pretty sure the Iron Giant belongs in a different movie, not this one. Uh, before anyone bites my head off, he definitely features prominently in the film and deserves to be there. Uh, as do a few other giant robots, I think Funko should get to work and make a few more. Apart from the Iron Giant and Parzival, there are also... There's Irock, there's a random Sixer, there's Sorrento, there's Sho, Daito, and H. And of course, there is Artemis with a three. I wouldn't mind adding any of the others to my collection, really, but I don't think this movie review has the legs for a second. Let me know if you'd like to see them anyway. I'm sure I can find them. I'd like... <clears throat> What are you doing? <laughs> no, that's not Parzival, Craig. We're not reviewing those ones again. Ah, oh, fine. Give them here. Hey, look, it's John, and he's reunited with his doggo. We'll just we'll put them over here. That's okay. Yeah, these look good over here. They do. They deserve each other. Back to Parzival, he is the one that comes standard in the box. We'll have to imagine the box for some reason. Um, as usual, it looks good if you want to put it on display. Of course, we have Craig over here, so that's not really our concern. You'll just have to take my word for it. Parzival has grey skin. The detail in this pop is really good. His hair starts off white and fades to blue. There's a little extra on the right side that's stuck on. It looks a little bit weird. You can only really see it up close though, so it's okay. My specific one has a little bit of brown on the top of his head. This is likely due to a close encounter with one of my other pops. He falls over quite easily, and I think he inherited some paint from one of the less eccentric characters. He has eyebrows painted on too, which is nice. And there are blue tattoos down his arms. He also has a blaster gun in his right hand, which is quite dangerous. And his clothing is quite detailed uh, with lots of blue. One detail worth mentioning is on the back of his jacket, there's a graphic on it of a sword. And this is, of course, in reference to Pottsville, one of the Knights of King Arthur. Now, this punker's shoes are quite special. They're supposed to be Converse All-Stars with uh, little golden wings on them. In the book, these are a unique item and they actually belong to Artemis, not Parzival. Parzival borrows them at some point to do something. And you should read the book. It's really good. Or listen to it. The audiobook's good too. 
I must say I really enjoyed Ready Player One. It's a great film. Not really because of the plot or the characters or the visual effects. It's just pop culture gold. There's so much stuff. You could talk about all the little details and the Easter eggs, all the different cameos. And you could talk about it for hours. And the difference between the movie and the books are quite uh, significant, but I'll keep things simple. If you enjoyed the movie, read the book. If you enjoyed the book, watch the movie. The original book was published in 2011 and written by Ernest Klein. Uh, one difference I thought was interesting was the book never really imagined drones to be a thing, but they make so much sense in the modern rendition. The movie itself was directed by Steven Spielberg and was released in 2018. The book drags out a little bit longer. Each task requires two things to happen, not just one, like in the movie. And there's another little accidental quest in the book that uh, makes it a lot more sense. That sentence doesn't make sense. Ignore me. It also gets a lot more real. I mean, the, the you really get to feel the poverty and the desperation of the characters from the book and the, the escape that is the oasis. There's also a whole planet covered in schools and there's some space battles, yeah, very, very realistic. And if you're a fan of Shoto and Daito, it might be a bit upsetting, so maybe be careful of the book. If you watch the movie and want more, the book is more. I mean, that's double. The audiobook is very good. It's narrated by Will Wheaton. It has a very amusing meta moment because Will Wheaton is actually a character in the book and he gets to read about himself and call himself a geezer. The movie is more of a collector's dream. Anyone who enjoys Funko Pops will probably understand. You watch the movie and immediately start trying to spot all of the different characters from the mountain of RP they somehow manage to license. I wouldn't dare actually put any part of this movie into my video because copy strikes would be coming. Craig, it's your time to shine. What is this Funko Pop going to get? Give it a rating. Four. You give everything a four. Are you sure? Four? Fine. That's for the pop, right? Not the character. Right. We'll go with that. Four out of five for this Funko. He's not my favorite, but he's up there. I like to keep him on my shelf because he's different to all of the very popular characters. And he can start a conversation. Well, uh, he can't, but the person who sees him can, in theory. This over here is my only companion, and he isn't the best conversationalist. Next time, we'll be back to the harp train if you like this video comment and subscribe if you didn't like it dislike comment and subscribe and hit the notification button if you're really feeling energetic uh, so you can make sure you're always early to tell us how little you liked it next time the inevitable Craig is gonna ruin the surprise again Go ahead, show them what's next. Go for it. Nope. Fine. Goodbye. Oh, now you put it out. <laughs>